Hey, brothers and sisters, God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. This is an exciting time, you guys. Um, I'm going to share, uh, as I normally do, a few things with you. Um, but tomorrow, you guys, tomorrow uh, I'm going to go with the, um, the sign in the heavens first. But you guys, tomorrow is going to be the beginning and you guys take a note take notice how there's a shift right now do you feel like this this um shift how you feel just feel lighter you feel the joy of the lord you feel like empowered and bold in the spirit you guys there is a shift happening and you guys when these um things these promises of the lord when they're fulfilled it happens uh, most of the time it happens gradually right so you have to be sensitive to the spirit to realize what's going on okay because if not then it happens um slowly throughout a, a period of time and sometimes people won't notice it and they're missing out they're not realizing that the promises of god the word of the lord is being fulfilled now you guys it talks about many several times about the day of salvation the day the day of redemption the lord says look up when you see these things begin to happen go read um go read the account in luke or matthew he, um, he said, when you see these things happen, right, all these things that we're, we know that are happening right now, he says, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Now, you guys, this comet is going to be in the northern hemisphere, right? In the northern hemisphere, this comet is going to be... Um, is going to be very apparent tomorrow. People will be able to see it, you guys. They're going to actually be able to see this comet, right? But um, on October 12th, you guys, if you're living in the Southern Hemisphere, it's th this comet A3 is going to, which is taught, it's, it's about the Lord, you guys. This comet is, uh, is about the Lord coming to Earth. OK, and this comet is going to be closest to the Earth on October 12th. And this is the day of South. This is the day of atonement. You guys, when the Lord talks about I will gather you on a day of salvation, a day of um of redemption. Right. This is taught. This is going to be fulfilled. Some of these scriptures on the day of atonement. And this sign, this this um this comet is going to be closest to the earth on the day of on exactly the day of atonement this year, you guys. And so you guys, this I'm telling you guys what is happening, you guys. I know there's brothers and sisters that are saying um that the Lord is telling them um that the rapture is going to happen and this and that and you guys i'm i'm not saying that what they're they're saying is wrong or they're not hearing from the lord what i'm saying is that these things what people per call the rapture they are going to happen a lot differently than people think okay it you guys most of the time this is what happens this is how the word is fulfilled okay so you guys prepare your hearts um, ask the Lord, seek the Lord of what I'm saying is true. And if it is, you guys, if you know that this is happening, be full of joy, uh, pray, intercede and ask the Lord how he wants you to prepare and stand in the gap for others. Okay. Um, you guys on my last video member, when I told you what the Lord led me to, and it was in the book of Daniel and I talked about this, that um, it says that the enemy, that he will sp speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Okay. And you guys, this came out just yesterday. Okay. Look at what, look at the article, you guys. This is why the Lord was leading me to this on my last video, why I was telling you about the scripture that the Holy Spirit led me to in Daniel was the Lord, the Holy Spirit was telling me that this thing was going to happen. You guys, he was telling me, it says the Holy Spirit will tell you things before they happen. Okay. And that you guys look, goodbye to daylight savings time in the United States. This is why the Lord 
was showing us this, you guys. So I'll leave this link in the description so you can check it out, you guys, because this is a lot of people, you guys, when we read that scripture many years ago, whenever you knew about it, we thought that the Antichrist, that the son of perdition was going to be pres pre uh, president or king and that all the believers would be in the, a literal jail. And see, you guys, that's not how this is. These things happen much differently than people think, okay? So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, so the last thing I want to share with you, you guys, really quick is that there was a brother. His name is Gavin Dees, and he's really awesome, you know, and um, the um, the Holy Spirit has really spoken to me a couple of times through him, and I, I love him. And um, but you guys, I want to share something with you. OK, this is the time, you guys, when error when things that are hidden, when error, what, whether it's in me, you, or anybody, else, it's going to come to the surface. And it's what we choose to do with it that determines what is going to happen to us. That, sh that reveals who we are. If we truly have humility, if we truly live a life of repentance. And he said something, you guys, and there's a lot of people that believe this. And they were taught, it, it was talking about Jesus Christ being crucified and these things. And he said, I do not worship um, um, a dead Jesus. Okay. He said that I do not worship a dead Jesus. And I, I'm saying this about you because of a revelation, you guys, that this brother had that I'm going to share with you. But I'm sure you guys have heard this and maybe you feel that same way too, right? And of course, we don't worship a dead Jesus, but I want to tell you what that is code for, what that actually means and what people are saying is that they, people do not, they think that talking about um, adoring the the Jesus Christ, that he was crucified for our sins, um, meditating and reflecting, praising and thanking him for the things that he went through, that we should only be, fo that it is not good to um, adore that, to worship that, but that we should be worshiping only the risen Lord. Jesus Christ. And a lot of these people that say that and think that you guys, there's um a lot of people that believe that this has been taught in, in, in the Christian community for a while. But those are people who oftentimes um, there's a root issue where they um, they only want to focus on the positive and the good and they tend to neglect right? The other things, the things on confronting sin, right? I'll, oftentimes, a lot of brothers and sisters who say that, they say that, oh, you shouldn't um, bring up error. You shouldn't be exposing. You shouldn't. And you guys, what I'm saying is if it's led of the Holy Spirit, then you should be doing that. Okay. And so what they're saying is that those things, whenever brothers and sisters are doing those things, they're not led of the Holy Spirit. And you guys, I will tell you right now that that is error. That is not true. And that's not biblical. And they're actually neglecting many scriptures that are in the word of God. OK, and this is the same problem that Jesus had in this time. The Pharisees were saying, oh, why are you doing this on Sabbath? Why are you doing this? It says this in the word. And he said, yes, it does. But it also says this. But what about this? OK, the difference was Yeshua, our, our father in the flesh, Jesus Christ was being led of the Holy Spirit. Okay, he was not being led by his own thoughts, his own thinking, his own ideologies. He didn't idolize those things. He was purely being led by the Spirit. And a lot of our brothers and sisters, because they don't want to look at certain things because it makes them feel uncomfortable and they think certain things about that, they exalt their own ways and only what is nice and pretty and good. And there's a scripture that talks about reflect on what is pure, what is holy, what is good. But it also says this, reflect on what is true. And I want to tell you guys something. Um, I think it's this video of, of Brother Brandon. He had a vision of the of the Lord and the Lord had 
the wound, the wounds in his hands. He had the wounds in his hands. And I think he talked about the wounds in his feet. I'm not sure. I think maybe it was just the hands, but that he, he saw the vision. Brandon did brother Brandon and the wheat was coming through the holes in his hands. Okay. And you guys, I want to tell you a revelation of this. Okay. You guys, it is through Jesus's nail pierced hands and feet. It is through the blood, sweat, and tears Yeshua endured on the day of his crucifixion. It is through the wounds that he incurred at the scourging of the pillar that enables that is even where to make it even possible for not only us to for salvation, but that the harvest would come in, that the Lord would redeem all of the sins of mankind. It is through those wounds and that sacrifice, you guys, and that cross of Calvary that so many brothers and sisters want to say, I don't worship, a, I don't worship, but they say, I don't worship a dead God. Well, neither do I, but I adore, I worship and glorify everything that he is, everything that he has done. And what he did on Calvary, the day that he was crucified, the merits, the almighty power of his wounds, the merits of his nail pierced hands and feet is even that is the only reason that we have salvation. And so to meditate upon those things, to praise, to worship and glorify the Lord for what he did to kiss and adore and praise those holy wounds, you guys, and meditate on those things is not worshiping a dead God. That is doing something that is good, that is pure. And when you meditate upon those things and pray upon those things and thank Jesus for those things, that manifest your when you do that as a human being in the alive in this physical realm, you're manifesting a spirit of the, a spirit of worship. You are manifesting in this world a spirit of thanksgiving that affects, that has a profound effect on this world, that goes up to the Lord as a glorious offering, that goes up to the Lord, that these ones worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So to meditate on those things, to praise and to thank and adore in every drop of blood, every drop of sweat, every drop of water that flowed forth from the pierced heart inside of Yeshua, Jesus Christ is a good thing. It is a holy thing. And to praise and to thank and adore the Lord for doing those things and praise every drop of blood, praise every wound that he went through is a good and holy thing. And those brothers and sisters that say, no, I'm not going to talk or think or do about that because uh, to me, that's worship being a dead God. That is error, you guys. That is error. And they are missing out on so many good blessings and gifts. They're missing out on doing that. Because if they live their life about it, there's going to be a testimony written about them by the angels on their day of their judgment, on the great white throne judgment, that they rejected that, that they exalted their own thoughts and their own feelings. And they never took thought and meditated on what our Lord did. Don't be that brother or sister, you guys. And, and if you have thought that, just correct your error. Don't be, don't be condemned, right? I'm not saying this to bring shame. I'm saying this to bring revelation so that we can repent and turn and be true to the Lord, be completely true and to meditate on what is good as what is good and holy. Because when you meditate upon those things, you guys, that is a good and a holy thing. And it manifests, it grows the kingdom of Christ. That's why Jesus said the kingdom is within you. When we do things that are led of the spirit, it manifests the kingdom in the earth. I wanted to share that with you guys. I love you all in Jesus mighty name. Amen.